campground there for Monday and Tuesday. Well, and then I got to come back south, 78 miles, to get back to Carlsbad. I'm going to load everything up, the car and all, and hopefully I'll be able to go into the park and park in that park completely hooked up. This is what I'm guessing. I don't even know. And then once we go through the cave, we're getting a tour. I signed up for a tour. I think he said it takes about an hour to do that. That way I get some videos. Some videos are allowed. Uh, flash is allowed. So I checked on that. And once that's over, uh, if they have like, I don't know, a snack bar or something there, we might sit down and have uh, a little lunch or something. Or a late lunch. And then I'm wanting to get into the van or the uh, RV and head south. Maybe. Well, I got to head south to go west. So, I think. <laughs> As you can see, I am well planned. So, this is our boondocking spot. Well, I brought my wireless microphones so I wouldn't have to worry about this microphone. But it's in there. I've never hooked it up. Uh, yeah, we're at a Love's truck stop here in Pecos. We're off of uh, Highway 285, I believe it is. You can look it up. And just on the other side over there is a big flying J. And over there uh, is a big hotel of some kind. And there's a KFC and all this and that. Um, I don't know if I got parking over there. I didn't really check. I just came over here. I figured I'd get parking either here or flying J. This is boondocking. Boondocking ain't always out in BLM land, sitting in the middle of the desert. And to be honest with you, that's really not my kind of boondocking anyway. I don't like that. I don't want to go out in the middle of nowhere and um, 100 degree, something goes wrong, you can't, you know, you don't have cell signal. I, I just don't feel comfortable at my age doing that. Nothing wrong with it. I mean, I may do it once in a while, but I'm really not big on that. I've, I've said that before. I would rather boondock here at a truck stop, even though people tell you it's noisy, it's this, it's that. But you know what? There's a garage right there in case I need something. There's a restaurant up there in that Love's in case I need something. There's a McDonald's right there attached uh, to Love's. Uh, there's all kinds of parts inside that Love store. Uh, there's cell signal here. There's Wi-Fi inside. These are my reasons why I'd rather boondock like this. So with that being said, let's get out of here and let's see if we can mosey on up to Carl's Bad KOA Campground. Okay, it's time for our morning roundup. We are heading uh, on 10 up to Fort Stanton. Stan. Good morning, everybody. Oh, it was a long night last night. Up and down these hills in the western part of Texas, in the hill country of Texas, I didn't realize, well, I did realize, I just forgot, is um, how steep some of these hills are here. I knew it was hilly, but uh, I just forgot. But anyway, along about, jeez, uh, I don't know, midnight, 10 o'clock, no, about 9 o'clock, after driving all day. I told Sue, I said, I'm just going to find a place to park it. Boondock it. I was tired. I said, you know, I kind of miss the old days where we had a real truck stop. Where you could go in and park, fuel up, and uh, go inside and sit down and have a little bite to eat. I mean, you can't do that much anymore. You go into a Love's. That ain't a truck stop. <laughs> Flying J, I guess, would be the closest thing. And all they ever have is a Denny's inside. And, I'm not a Denny's fan at all, but I guess I could I could eat it in a pinch, but I don't like it. So anyway, I'm here at one of the top of one of the mountains here, off of um, I-10. I wish I could tell you the name of the closest town, but I really forget. I want to say it's something like um, um, Ketter Ketterville. Uh, anyway, don't don't take my word for that. So we came up to. Uh, a truck stop supposedly and it had a name I've never heard before and I told Sue I'm gonna, I'm gonna get off of that truck stop and see if I can get gas there the hardest part is getting gas I got gas but it was a good thing nobody was here the way these gas stations are designed see how tight it is from the front, front of that where that car is right there that's where I got gas from there to there that's not enough room and they're all angled that way that's not enough room for me to, to go straight and turn left I can't do that. And if I wanted to turn right, these semis have heard in that first uh, fuel pump right there, you can see they're right in my way to turn to turn right and come over here. 
So what I ended up doing, there was a car there when I first got here. I went past it all the way down to there, made a right, came this way between the pumps and the store. This sounds dumb, I know. There was no trucks over here because I seen that guy was getting ready to go. So what I done, I came over here and I made a swing and I parked over here out of everybody's way. And as soon as he pulled out, then I went up into there, made another swing up to the pump. Of course, my rig is now way up in here and uh, filled it up. And then I made a U-turn and come over here. And as you can see, we're in a comfy spot. We ain't bothering nobody here. We're all over here by ourselves. It's just a fence and a, and um, looks like they've been doing some work over here. The last night I could hear some animal over here on the other side of this fence. I don't know what it was. I was in bed and I wasn't going to get up. Might have been a wild uh, mule. I don't know. Could have been maybe a um, a deer of some kind. Might have been a cow. I don't think it was a cow though, but it could have been. Making a funny uh, grunt kind of noise. Could have been a bull. We had a bull on the farm that done that. He would go around and grunt a lot. And down out here they got, you know, some of them rodeo bulls that they like run around wild. You can kind of see what the uh, territory looks like. A lot of cactus. A lot of brush. Over there is uh, on top of a uh, kind of a hill, mountain kind of thing. And that goes all the way, if you look, it goes all the way across there. It goes a long way. Well, I'm at the top of all this. And we're sitting here. I got to put my slides in. I got to put my antenna down. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go inside and finish drinking my coffee. And I just want to show you where we were at. Oh, there's an the image of the uh, truck stop. Segovia. S-E-G-O-V-I-A. And there's a little restaurant in there. It's a Mexican restaurant, tacos and things like that. And we had that last night and uh, grabbed a couple of uh, drinks put in the refrigerator. So plenty of room to boondock here. Nobody bothered us. So it was good. Now we're going to head uh, further north uh, toward uh, Carlsbad somewhere. Okay, I'm going to try to shoot this by hand. <coughs> Battery went dead. I had on a on the charger so I just picked it up we're in the um, according to this I'm uh, 11 miles from Loving Texas and all we've seen out here for a hundred miles has been oil rigs and more oil rigs everywhere we have went through a couple of you might call them towns but I don't think they are it's just an area that's been set up for the oil riggers out here that come out here and live out here to, to do their job. It's a place to go get um, groceries, gas, stuff like that. And who knows how bad they're getting ripped off on that because it's just in the middle of nowhere. So anyway, traffic on this road ain't bad because it's just basically trucks and oil riggers. And us. And us. So I'll just try to move around so you kind of see what I see. This is out the uh, driver's door window here. Just wide open spaces up here. Not a much, not much. They got sewage disposal plants up here and the way the way they are, it's just a big hole they dig in the ground. They line it, that's Fat Bob trying to call me. He can't work his phone. And um, they line it with plastic or something. And then uh, they just leave it in there and then when the hot sun comes out, it kind of de just dehydrates everything. And then they scoop out the leftovers and haul it away. All kinds of temporary housing up here for the oil riggers. I was wanting to get video of at least one of them so you can see what they look like. But basically what they are is a long, and there's a lot of them, um, covers. It's almost like uh, 
in that campground. They put poles in the ground. You have a roof over top of your camper to keep it in the shade. And they got lights and hook up and all that stuff inside. They park them all inside of that, underneath that roof. And that's where the oil, uh, oil riggers live while they're here working. I don't know how long they stay here. You know, a week, two at a time, I don't know. But we saw several of those. There's somebody's feedlot. I know this video is probably not the best, me moving this thing around, but I'm just trying to get shots all around here. And when I've got it on the windshield, you only see, you know, basically one direction. There's Sue. I'm going to show you how it looks like when you're driving one of these things. There's the mirror, my outside mirror. That's what I see. Someone asked me, says, how do you keep uh, an eye on your car? Well, I got a, a backup camera that I can turn on. It's probably not going to look the greatest right now because it rained two or three days on us. And um, I noticed that there was some mud or something spliced on the back of my camper. I'll show you here in a minute. But there, there's some more temporary housing up here. I want to show you that. This one ain't very big. We saw one a while ago. There was hundreds of these. There they are. For whoever whoever that company is, that's some of the tiny houses they bring in here. Like I said, most of them is RVs, trailers, uh, fifth wheels. I saw tons and tons of fifth wheels underneath of those uh, shaded awnings, I guess you call it. Looks like there's some small little town up here maybe. But anyway. Now this may flash a little bit because of the difference in the cameras, but it's working fine. There's no there's no flashing going on. Here's my here's how I watch my car. Monitors your car. And then of course I got the left and right turn signals out here to kind of help keep an eye on things too. I I don't hardly ever use them cameras on the side. I use my mirrors. I can see everything with my mirrors. I suppose they come in handy for some things, but I just don't use them. See you guys on the other side.